Captain, you've not been a lodger of mine this year and a half. Let me down those fellas there. Those Mr. Lockett seem to be the heaviest of the whole set. By your leave, I should like the father fare better. You know the custom, Captain. Garnish, Captain, garnish. End them down, I say. We have them at all prices, from one guinea to ten. And it's fitting that every gentleman should please himself. I understand you, sir. The fees here are so many and so exorbitant that the few fortunes can bear the expense of dying like a gentleman. And down the further pair, those I see will fit the captain better. See how genteelly they're made. If I had the noblest gentleman in the land in my custody, I couldn't equip him more handsomely. And so, sir, I now leave you to your private meditation. What a woeful plight have I brought myself. Here must I stay confined to hear the reproaches of Lucy Lockett, who lays a ruin at my door. I'm in custody of her father, and to be sure if he knows of the matter, I shall have a fine time of it until I be hanged. Oh, but here she comes, and I cannot get from her. Would I were deaf. You, base man, you! How can you look me in the face after what has passed between us? See here, perfidious wretch, how oh, I'm forced to bear about this load of infamy you've laid upon me. Oh, MacGeath, to see you tortured would give me great pleasure. Thus, when a good housewife sees a rat in her trap in the morning taken, thus, when a good housewife sees a rat in her trap in the morning taken, with pleasure her heart goes pit to pat in revenge for her loss of bacon. Then she throws him to the dog or cat to be worried, crushed, and shaken. No bowels, no tenderness, my dear Lucy, to see a husband in these circumstances. A husband? In every respect but the form, my dear. From a man of honour, his word is as good as his bond. It is the pleasure of all you fine men to insult the women you have ruined. At the very first opportunity, my dear Lucy, you shall be my wife in whatever manner you please. Insinuating monster. And so you think I know nothing of the affair of Miss Polly Peachum. I could tear your eyes out. Sure, Lucy, you cannot be such a fool as to be jealous of Polly. Are you not married to her, you brute, you? <laughs> married? <laughs> Very good. She sets it about only to vex you and to ruin me in your good opinion. Come, come, Captain. For all your assurances, you know that Miss Polly has put it out of your power to do me the justice you promised me. I am ready, my dear Lucy, to give you satisfaction if you think there is any in marriage. What can a man of honour say more? So then... You're not married to Miss Polly? You know, Lucy, the girl is prodigiously conceited. No man can say a civil thing to her, but her vanity makes her believe he's her own forever and ever. The first time at the looking glass, the mother sets her daughter. The image strikes the smiling lass with self-love ever after. The more she looks, she ponder grown, thinks every charm grows stronger. But alas, vain maid, all eyes but your own can see you are not younger. Can see you are not younger. Oh, my dear Lucy, I'd rather die than be false to you. <sighs> oh, happy I am if you say this from your heart, for I love you so that I could sooner bear to see you hanged than in the arms of another. But could you bear to see me hanged? Make me, if possible, love you more. Let me owe my life to you. Oh, my father, I know, has been drinking with the prison women. I can procure the keys. Shall I go off with you, my dear? If we are together, it'll be impossible to lie concealed. Um. As soon as the search becomes a little cool, I shall send for you. Until then, my heart is your prison. Whence came you, Azzy? My tears 
this might answer that question. You've then been whimpering and fondling like a spaniel over the fellow that had abused you. One can't help love. One can't cure it. It's not in my power to obey you and hate him. Like a good wife, go and moan over your dying husband. Oh. That charge your duty. Consider, girl. You can't have the man and the money, too. So make yourself easy by getting all you can from him. <laughs> A small sum would would twenty guineas think you move him? What love or money can do shall be done. For all my comfort depends upon your safety. Oh. Where is my dear husband? Where is my dear Was a rogue ever intended for this neck? Oh, let me throw my arms about it and throttle you with love. Oh. It's your folly, your way. Whatever such an unfortunate wretch as I am. Was I ever such another? The wench is distracted. Am I not your wife? Look on me, tell me. Am I not your wife? Perfidious wretch. Barbarous husband. Had you been hanged five months ago, I'd been happy. Oh. And I too. Are you then married to Oh, women's woman? tongues could cease for an answer here. I will not. Shall I not claim my own? Just as big as me. Have you then two wives, monster? How happy could I be with either one other, dear charmer, away? But while you will tease me together to lie, then a word will I say. But told you all, all, already, and told you all, all, already. But while you will tease me together to lie, then a word will I say. To lie, then a word will I say. Marriage, I'm thinking of hanging. And have you the heart to persist in disowning me? Have you the heart to persist in persuading me that I am married? Really, Miss Teacher, you but expose yourself. Besides, it's barbarous in you to worry a gentleman in his circumstances. Cease your fawning, force or cunning. Never shall my heart.
seriously, Polly. This is carrying the joke a little too far. If you are determined, madam, to raise a disturbance in the prison, madam, I shall be obliged to send for the turnkey to show you the door. I'm sorry, madam. You forced me to be so hell-bred. Give me leave to tell you, madam. These forward airs do not become you in the least, madam. And my duty, madam, obliges me to stay with my husband, madam. Come, madam, flirt, if you thus must chatter, and off a flinging dart, and off a flinging dart, let's try to confess, madam, flirt. Hussey, come your home, you slacker. Be a my prisoner now, Hussey! Dear father, don't tear me from him! Twist your fetters about me! It's neither pull me from you! Away, not a word more! Oh, <laughs> 